Hi guys and welcome back to The Nest. It's Viper here and as my name shows up on Google because it's giving me a hard time about changing it. Yes, my actual name is Ruth. We do live here in Helena, Montana, not too far from the Canada border. And speaking of Canada, Young Grasshopper, your Operation Octopus was simply astounding. It was very, very fun to watch. And so, yes, you can tell your friends, Ray SS and Hambone and everybody else who was there, I am a real woman. I am a real Axis and Allies player, and I am a very, very aggressive Axis player. With that, here we come up to 1927 with the Chinese Civil War. But before I get into that, everybody has a tendency to ask, Viper, why do you play the Axis power so much? Well, last night NATO and I sat down and we played Merchants and Marauders, and for once I decided that I was going to play the good guy. Guess who got her ass kicked? This girl, right here, does not play the good guy, does not win as the good guy, do not ask me to be a good guy, that's not going to happen, okay? Okay, so back to the Chinese Civil War. Since 1927, and communism has moved into China. We've got Mao, who is not quite a dictator yet, but he is pretty well up there, and Chang on the KMT side, who is, you know, might as well be a dictator, because all he sees is that there's communism in China, and that's just no good. It's no bueno, it's, there's no way, it's, das ist nicht gut, this is no good, dies no bueno, whatever way you want to say it, it's just not a good thing to him, and that's all he can focus on. Mao has his little isolated pockets of different units all over the place, and he is going to sit there and battle against KMT. While in that process, Chang loses sight of everything, and he is totally tunnel visioned on CCP China, being completely eradicated from the China uh, borders. So while he's in that process, it's 1931 comes along, and Japan decides that, oh, look, it's Manchuria. We're going to go in, we're going to lick that ice cream cone and call it ours. And that's exactly what they did. Japan jumped on Manchuria, liberated it, found the old king emperor who was the golden child for history buffs out there, put him on the throne. Manchuria becomes Manchuko and becomes a puppet state of Japan. In this process, everything is going Cheng's way. He is defeating CCP for what it's worth. What he didn't realize, he was only defeating small pockets of the army. And KMT, or not, not KMT, but CCP decides they're going to head east to Hunan and start the world famous Long March North. So on their way up, they go up to what would now be on our map as Communist China, just south of Shanxi. They would entrench there in the mountains where they could not be pushed out. And that's where they would stay until 1937 when Japan decides that they're actually going to invade common China. During the common China invasion, that's when KMT and CCP sign a ceasefire. Chang turns on his word and starts battling against the CCP China anyway. And one thing turns into another and basically Chang is now fighting a two front war. So, we're going to take a look into all of that here. We have not decided if we're going to play a global, uh, global Axis and Allies World War II yet because we did do a series on those. We might do it again. We're not sure. So, um, a shout out to No Limits. That was one of our commenters here recently. I know you want to see an Axis and Allies game. We are building up to that. And um, as far as us doing a YouTube game, if we have the time, we will be more than happy to join you guys in an online YouTube game. But please let us know when it is so that we can make our schedules work to where it will work with you. So that being said, we're going to get right into the game. It's KMT versus CCP just before World War II, and it's after the Great War. We'll be right back. Hello everybody, this is Nano at the Nest, and this is the setup. Uh, for the Chinese Civil War, you know, KMT versus CCP. As you can see, it's pretty small um, compared, at least compared to the you know last scenario, which was World War One, was massive. Um, this is gonna be another one of those optional things, um, but just for uh, set up a potential, you know, what if, you know, if, if the KMT manages to 
wipe out the CCP before World War II starts and we have a World War II where there's no CCP and uh, Japan has to fight a more united China. Uh, obviously not, still not a completely united China because you know half of China is still taken over by warlords but uh, the objectives are pretty simple. KMT has to destroy the CCP. The CCP just has to survive. And uh, a shift from uh, the dice. Now we're not using Grasshopper's battle dice anymore. We're switching to the D12s because that's what the 1936 World War II scenario uses. And it's the dice rolls are well, the rules pretty much follow uh, global 1936. Uh, it, well, they do. Uh, so no, no special rules or nothing different like how the previous scenarios have been. Uh, everything follows global 1936 rules. And like. Viper said starts in 1927 and it'll go all the way up to 1936 when the global uh, 36 World War II begins. And then, uh, like Ruth said, in 31 Japan takes Manchuria. Uh, Japan's not a playable na nation in this scenario when the designated uh, turn comes to pass those four KMT roundels will be taken off and will just be automatically taken off and KMT production will be adjusted accordingly and then you just keep going on until uh, 30, 1936 hits or the CCP is destroyed whichever ha happens first so with that we will get into the game we'll see you with the first turn and of 1927. Hello everybody, this is NATO at the Nest and this is with the first three turns of the Chinese Civil War. So it started in 1927 and it's a f it started fall 1927 so it was only one turn of 27. And no one attacked that turn. Uh, KMT just built up its forces and then so did the CCP and then the CCP took its mountain troops out of uh, Zhejiang there and moved them up into just south of communist China so to take advantage of that plus one uh, defense for mountain troops uh, th those mountain troops would be wasted in Zhejiang because uh, they defend out of four there but if they if um, they moved them up to there in that mountain territory they had to defend out of five then so Viper moved the her two starting mountain infantry up there to take advantage of that defensive bonus. Uh, the second turn, so spring of uh, 1928 uh, KMT moved down and took uh, Zhejiang and put CCP, CCP production down to two. And then, so the third turn, the fall of 28, uh, once again, no one attacked. Uh, KMT thought about it, but it, they would have been outnumbered and out, outgunned by CCP to decide not to attack and spend another turn building up. And Viper bought another mountain infantry and put it in Sichuan. And all those yellow dudes, those are the warlords because uh, China is very splintered at this at this point. And so all the, all the yellow is all the warlord territories. And KMT or CCP cannot move into any warlord territories. Uh, can't attack them, can't move through them, they're off limits. And that was it. Uh, because the rounds are so quick, we're not going to do a video every turn. We're going to do every 
we're going to do a video for every calendar year. So at, so every second turn we'll do a video. Except for this turn, we did three uh, because it started in fall of 27. So we did three turns, so we'd end at the we do a video at the end of every year instead of a video halfway through the year. So from th this point on, it'll be every other turn that we do a video. So we'll see you again at the end of 29. Yeah, at the end of 1929. See you then. Hi guys, welcome back. It's calendar year 1929. Um, you can see a lot of orange building up there on the board. So uh, NATO decided to get his balls out of his purse and he brought in his forces and attacked Sichon. And you can see who's still sitting there. It's not him at all because he lost very badly. The mountaineers definitely took a beating on his infantry. Um, we kill he brought in five infantry he left with two let me put it that way um, he brought in a cavalry unit and a mountaineer of his own and um, yeah they, they just they just went back home they're like yeah we're done we're gonna take our ball we're gonna go back to our yard so that first round I actually didn't buy anything because I only had two IPCs for it and so I just built that back up and so in the fall of 1929, I picked up another Mountaineer. So that actually puts a defensive line of up to 20. So that's five apiece because they're in the mountains. So that's something to keep in mind. Is I'm, not that I'm turtling up because I hate, hate turtling up. It's actually one of the biggest things I despise. And it's uh, more of I'm playing the defense until Japan decides they're going to come in and lick that ice cream cone known as Manchuria. So we're going to keep looking on there. Uh, NATO picked up some more infantry and a couple more mountaineers of his own. So uh, this next round is the uh, spring of 1930. And we're going to keep an eye on that as we watch this come in because 1931 is when Japan comes in and they take Manchuria and KMT loses half of their production. So keep an eye out. We'll be back here soon at the end of 1930. Hello everybody, this is NATO and Viper at the Nest, and the results of the 1930 turn, KMT made another attack against the CCP at Sichon, and it was another total disaster. Um, yep. CC, CCP got two really good rolls on their recruitment rolls. Um, the CCP at the end of their turn they can make a recruitment roll and if the die is equal to or less to the total number of territories that it controls it gets a free infantry or two free militia it's it's one of the other they can't get both and Ruth got two hits on that so she got she pulled in two militia and an infantry and plopped them down in Szechuan and that tipped the scale of the battle that was originally going my way Till we remembered that we weren't, we hadn't done her recruitment rolls for five turns now, so we quickly did that, and the two militia and extra infantry tipped the scales. We redid the battle because it was technically invalid. Uh, uh, an invalid move, and she totally kicked my ass. Again. So I ran, I ran back home like a little bitch, and here we are. <laughs> so we'll come back with the. Uh, 1931 turn and by then all that will be in Japan's hands and my production will be shit and we'll go from there. See you then. Hi guys, welcome back to the nest. As you can see, not much has really changed. There's just a lot more orange on the board. Uh, NATO did try to attack Sachan one more time um, and again to his failure I did not successfully roll a recruitment roll for either part of the year so that was out of the question um, however I did have militia left over so I utilized that in that in that battle um, granted none of the militia hit but 
I did take four hits off of NATO and so that has resulted him down to minimal infantry units and I now sit at five mountaineers over there and I have four infantry and I have a militia sitting just in Sichuan on the defensive side. Now Japan has taken over Monteria up here so uh, KMT China has lost four IPCs for that so are, they are down to six. Um, so far I have played on the defensive side on purpose. You may or may not see some other things come along as I figure out what I'm going to do next. Um, really there's, how many turns do we have left? We don't have that many turns left, do we? Uh, got the camera. nine turns left. Yeah, we're already halfway through the game. So if even if you're just a regular Axis and Allies player and you just played 1940 or you're just a Bulge player or just a Pacific or just a, a European, just keep in mind that some of these little spurts of battles we have, they do actually go really quickly and it doesn't take a lot. You can take a classic board and you can build this game from it. I mean, that's actually what we started on is we built from the classic boards and um, rolled out then you know picked up a map and we rolled it out and so that's what we're using it from so it's it's nice and it's fun it's very fast paced it's a lot of strategy uh, all at once um, it keeps your mind moving and currently it is 12 38 in the morning and um, I think we're actually gonna finish this tonight because uh, it, it might take another hour and a half at most for us to get through it. So uh, we'll see you on the next round. <laughs> <laughs> this is Hyper <laughs> NATO. <laughs> Sorry, we, we've been. <laughs> Viper was attacked by our wonderful cat, and so she the, has her own pillbox. They're they're in, <laughs> they're in a cat fight at the moment. So. <laughs> anyways, it's fall of 1933. We, um, no one attacked in 32, and nothing changed. So we just kept on pressing until something happened, and I attacked Viper and. Got his ass kicked. <laughs> Not like I'm getting my ass kicked by a cat. <laughs> <laughs> he was to say the attack didn't go so well for me. He got hit by seven dice. I, I lost seven infantry and she lost a militia. Oh, so. and your cavalry. And, and my cavalry. So I retreated. Yeah, and, cat. <laughs> and so we'll come back with the end of 34. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to the nest, guys. Um, sorry about that in the last round. The cat and I were having a major disagreement on whether or not yarn was mine or hers as I am putting together a project over here. And uh, she's scowling now, which means I won and I should probably not sleep tonight. So, but um, on the concept that I won, guess what, guys? I actually won again a game, a game against NATO. Again, very well balanced. Um, he had a year left to literally come with everything he had, and he did, and I killed it all. <laughs> it took a few rounds, but I did end up completely demolishing his army. So what you see here would have been the last turn of purchases had there been another turn but I defeated him before that was um, a thing. So um, I actually defeated him in the second to last turn. So these would have been his purchases because before that, that was very literally all he had on the board was just those militia because he came at me literally with everything he had and he played a very good game. We both played a very good game. Again, very well balanced. We love well balanced games. But uh, CCP is going to remain in World War II. Now, the fun part about this is, looking at this, you want to know um, if CCP had been defeated. Um, you know, we had a player who decided that their Mountaineers should be here in Hunan, which is worth nothing. Or that they should attack from Zhejiang instead of moving up and protecting those mountains. Or uh, whatever the case may be. 
there's a lot of different things that could have happened here but it, when I looked at this and I saw my original setup as my mountaineers were here in Zhejiang I went yeah they're on the coast and they're not marines so I got them out of there as fast as I could and that actually probably saved my butt because if I had moved them just to Hunan or something else then I probably would have lost them very very quickly again Hunan not worth anything in production value so losing it really didn't bother me too much um, it was pretty 50 50 on the recruitment roles whether or not I got one whether or not I didn't get one um, so that's what we're really looking at here so uh, good game this is part one of the Chinese Civil War just so you guys know and for you history buffs out there you do know that when the World War II starts up there's a ceasefire that goes into play and the uh, Chinese Civil War will pick back up once World War II is over uh, we have not still decided on whether or not we're going to play World War II and put up another scenario or if we're just gonna skip past it with the um, winnings and stuff. I know that um, Princess over here decided that she wanted Russia to win or not win because she decided to knock Russia off the board last time. So we'll we'll figure it out. We'll let you guys know. But for now, we'll see you guys next time here, here from the Nest Wars of the World. This is Viper. And me. And me. <laughs> and NATO. We will see you guys on the next round.